I wish to read for a, a text this afternoon, just to start off the life story, found over in the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter. And let's begin here about, I'd say about the 12th verse. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go, therefore, to him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Now, that is kind of a text. For you see, if it's a life story or anything pertaining to a human being, we don't glorify that, and especially a, a man's past, if it's been as dark as mine has been. But I thought if we read the Scripture, God would bless the Scripture. And my thought is that here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Now, I know that you're very fond of Los Angeles. You have a right to be. It's a great, beautiful city with its smog and what more. Yet it's a beautiful city. Fine climate. But this city cannot continue. It's got to have an end. I've stood in Rome where the great emperors and the cities that they thought they would build immortal and dig down 20 feet to even find the ruins of it. I stood where the pharaohs has had their great kingdoms and You'd dig down in the ground to find where the great pharaohs ruled. All of us like to think about our city and our place, but remember, it cannot stand. When I was a little boy, I used to go to a great maple tree in my country. We have a lot of hardwood. And then we had this maple trees, the sugar maple, and what we call the hard maple and soft maple. This great, gigantic tree, it was the most beautiful tree. When I would come in from the fields of working and the hay and, and the harvests, I would love to go to this big tree and, and sit down under it and, and look up. And I'd see its great, mighty uh, uh, branches sway in the wind, great, huge trunk. And I said, you know, I believe that this tree will be here for uh, hundreds and hundreds of years. Not long ago, I took a look at the old tree. It's just a snag. For here we have no continuing city. No, nothing here on the earth that you can look at will continue. It's got to have an end. Everything that's mortal has to give away to an immortality. So no matter how good we build our highways, how fine we make our structures, it all has to go. For here there's nothing can continue. Just the unseen is what continues. I remember the house that we lived in. It was an old log house chinked with mud. I have, perhaps maybe many never seen a house chinked with mud. But it was all chinked up with mud and the great huge logs that was in the old house, I thought that house would stand for hundreds of years. But you know, today where that house stood is a housing project. It's so much different. Everything's changing. But now I used to see my father. He was a rather a short, stocky man, very strong. And he was one of the strongest little men that I knew of. I met Mr. Coots, a fellow that he used to work with in the logs. He was a logger. And about a year ago, and Mr. Coots is a very good friend of mine, a deacon in the First Baptist Church. And he said, Billy, you ought to be a real powerful man. And I said, no, I'm not, Mr. Coots. 
He said, if you took after your daddy, you would be. He said, I seen that man weighing 140 pounds, load a log on the wagon by himself. It weighed 900 pounds. He just knew how to do it. He was strong. I'd seen him come into the place to wash and get ready for dinner when mother would call him. And we had an old apple tree out in the front yard. And then there was three or four small ones along towards the back. And right in the middle tree, there was an old looking glass that had been broke, mara, large one, and had been tacked on the side of the tree with some nails bent in, kind of like what some of you carpenters listening in would call coat hangers. It had been bent in to hold the glass in its place. There was an old tin comb. How many ever seen an old tin, the old-fashioned tin comb? I can just see it. And then there was a little wash bench, just a little board with a little slanting leg beneath it, tacked against the tree. A little old half-sulfur pump there that we pumped the water out and we washed at this old tree. And Mama used to take meal sacks and make Towels. Anybody ever use a meal sack towel? Well, I'm sure I feel at home now. And those big old rough towels, and when she'd give us little kitties a bath, she'd feel like she was rubbing the hide off every time she rubbed. And I remember that old meal sack, and she'd pull some of the strings out and make little tassels to kind of decorate it up. How many ever slept on a straw tick? Well, I will say. How many ever know what a shuck pillow was? Well, Brother Glover, I'm at home now, sure enough. Mm-hmm. Straw tick, well, it hasn't been too long since I just come off of one. And it was, an, oh, it's good sleeping, cool. Then in the wintertime, they take the old feather bed and lay on it, you know, and then have to put a piece of canvas over the top of us to cause the snow blowing in the, the, uh, the cracks in the house, you know, where the old clapboard shingles would turn up, you know, and the snow would sweep through it. And, oh, I can remember that very well. And then Pop used to have a shaving brush. Ah, now this is going to get you. It was made out of corn shucks. A shaving brush with corn shucks. He'd take mother's old lye soap that she had made, fix it up, and put it on his face with this corn shuck brush and shave it with a big old straight razor. And on Sunday, he'd take the um, the pieces of paper, stick around his collar, the wore celluloid collars, and put it around the collar like this to keep the the, the lather from getting on his shirt collar. Did you ever see that done? Why, my my. I remember a little old spring down below where we used to go get a drink of water and get our water out of an old gourd dipper. How many ever seen a gourd dipper? Well, how many of you is from Kentucky anyhow? <laughs> well, just looking here at the Kentuckians. Well, my, I'm, I'm right at, I thought it was all Okies and Arkies out here. But it looked like Kentucky's moving in. Well, they did strike oil in Kentucky a few months ago, you know, so maybe that's, that some of them's coming this way. And then I remember when Dad used to come in and take his wash for dinner, and he'd roll up his sleeves, them little short, stubby arms. And when he'd pull up his arms to wash, throw the water up on his face, the muscles just wadded in his little arms. And I said, you know, my daddy will live to be 150 years old. He was so strong, but he died at 52. See? Here we have no continuing city. That's right. We cannot continue. Now, let's take a little trip, all of us. There's ever one of you here that has a life story, just as I do. And it's good to stroll down memory's lane once in a while. Don't you think so? Just go back and let's all go back for a while, back to... Similar experiences as a a little children. Now the first part of the life story, I'll just give it a little touch because it's in the book and many of you have the book. I was born in a little mountain cabin way up in the mountains of Kentucky. They had one 
room that we lived in, no rug on the floor, not even wood on the floor. It was just simply a bare floor. And a stump, top of a stump cut off with three legs on it, that was our table. And all those little Branhams would pile around there and out on the front of the little old cabin and Waller down, looked like where a bunch of possums had been wallering. Out there in the dust, you know, all the little brothers, it was nine of us. And one little girl, and she really had a rough time amongst that bunch of boys. We have to respect her yet today from the things that we did in those days. She couldn't go with us anywhere, we'd run her back. She was a girl. So she couldn't take it, you know. So we had, and all... Remember that back behind the table, uh, we had just two chairs, and they were made out of limb bark, just old hickory uh, saplings put together, and the bottom of them laced with hickory bark. Did anybody ever see a hickory bark chair? Yeah. And I can hear Mama yet, all oh, later on when we got into a place where she could have a wooden floor with those babies on her lap like this and rocking that old chair, just bang, did he bang, did he bang on the floor. I remember to keep the little ones from going out the door when she would be washing or something, she'd lay a chair down and turn it kind of catacornered across the door to keep the little ones from getting out when she had to go to spring to get water and so forth. And mother was 15 years old when I was born. Dad was 18, and I was the first of the nine children, and they told me that the morning I was born, now we was very poor, just the poorest of poor, and we did not even have a window in this little cabin. It had like a little wooden door that you open. I doubt whether you ever seen anything like that. A little wooden door that opened instead of a window. You keep it open in the daytime, you closed it at night. We couldn't turn on the electric lights or even burn kerosene in those days. We had what you call a grease lamp. I don't know whether you ever know what a grease lamp was. Well, what do you... And did you ever buy, burn a pine knot? For, just take a pine knot and light it and lay it up on a lid? It'll burn. And that's smoked up a little bit, but they had no French or anyhow to smoke up, so it just... The cabin got the smoking. It drawed good because there's plenty of roof up there for it to draw through. So it, um, and I was born on April the, the 6th, 1909. Of course, you know that makes me a little over 25 now. And so, uh, the morning that I was born, mother said that, uh, they opened up the window. Now we had no doctors. It was a midwife, just, and that midwife was my grandmother. And so when I was born and my first beginning to cry and, and mother wanted to see her child and, and she's no more than a child herself. And when they opened up the little window just at the break of day, about five o'clock in the there was an old robin sitting by the side of a little bush, as you all seen the picture of it in my, in my book of my life story. An old robin was sitting there just singing for all that was in him. 